And I'll end with uh, two poems from my most recent book, uh, Recipe for Disaster, Display Product. Um, I just finished a fourth manuscript and sent it out, so uh, cross fingers, cross fingers. Um, this is a poem, um, I've read all the poems from this book, for some reason I never read this one, and I don't really know why, because it's a real fun poem to read. This is called Leo Kagan, His Downstairs Neighbor, the Stockbroker, and the Arts in the Big City. I apologize if there are any stockbrokers here. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it. Uh, this is in four parts. Number one, who is it that puts these strange green brochures in my mailbox every day? Tonight, at midnight, Leo Kagan will draw rings around the moon. The public is cordially invited. I find this so annoying, climbing the stairs to my apartment one at a time. I have films from France and Hong Kong to go to. I have gorgeous brochures from people who want to sell me motorcycles and cars. I have successful friends with black hair all over town. I find this so annoying. It has nothing to do with me. Two, the strange man from upstairs spends the whole damn day shuffling across his floor, knocks at my apartment every night with every excuse in the book to make talk. May I borrow an English muffin? Loud and moving slowly in my living room, wearing down my rugs, endlessly talking. May I examine your life magazine? He stares at my television and gives me these weird warnings, pointing out my big dirty window in his too stiff green suit, like old wallpaper, like counterfeit money. This is not your house, Leo Kagan. This chair was not put here for you to shuffle by. This rug wasn't made for you to walk on in a frog ugly suit. This rug was made for women in suede skirts, Leo Kagan, who sit in this chair, who stretch out and touch this rug with just one toe, then tilt back their incredible heads so carefully, Leo Kagan as if crossing a bridge. And finally, at midnight, the strange man from upstairs goes out to meet his public. Tunneling deep into the suburbs, a subway car all to himself, he arranges himself in the window like a work of art, his arms in beautiful angles. But nobody's watching. No one even sees his great silhouette like some Japanese cartoon. At the end of the line, there's just one man on the platform and one man on the train. He leans out the window and yells politely across the tracks, Sir, this is the end of the line. Now, if you and I will take the train together back downtown, I promise you a performance, a performance. I wish I was ambidextrous here. Um, I'm going to end with um, one of my uh, signature poems because um, my friend, uh, my friend Virginia wanted me to read this and she couldn't make it tonight, so she wants to see it on the podcast. Yay! So this is a resignation letter to the boss from hell. All right. yes. To KK, my mama didn't raise me to work for a jerk. Get out of my life, you inky shoe, you pencil snap duke of bad cabbage. Who do you think you are, you swaggering germ, you hairy spittoon, you slug shiny dollop of hooey? You ate nothing but a chamber pot fez, a fruitcake, and a bat wing toupee. Go stick it in your ear, you tuxedo of fleas, you feculent chasm of cancer. I'm free at last, you tantrum of splat, you lichen-faced fop, 
you bucket of gunk with intestinal handles, you greasy smear of ratatouille on the dazzling white smile of life. I'll see you in hell, you cathedral of slime, with your yaw chandelier and your fungus cologne and your gangrene tattoos and your spider leg teeth. Oh, you sheep dip chow mein that I spit out spluttering because it tastes like death in striped pants. Find yourself a new sucker, you mechanized yam. Eat wasps, grow another. Drive your car off the cliff of your cheesiness. And make crazed hippopotami spit on your wife. Spat two, spat two, spat two -y. And that goes to the people who laid me off and replaced me with two younger workers. Oh. Thank you. I'm giving up one more time.